Welcome, or oh, welcome back to A Game of Thanks and Thrones. My name's Hannah. This is my July TBR. Can you believe we are in July already? But anywho, I read 10 books in June. I'm currently reading the 11th, just out of shot here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick eight out of the jar. That's because... I go back to work on the 8th of July, so my reading time way over here. So my reading time will be limited because I'm going back to work. So let's give this a bit of a shuffle. And we'll grab the little charms because they annoy me. Right, so Number one is The Bourne Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. The Bourne Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones is on Kindle, so I have my kin the Kindle store up to get the book details. As Buffy the Vampire Slayer meets Sky in the Deep, then this bewitching historical horror novel, novel perfect for fans of Holly Black and V.E. Schwab. Sounds intriguing. I think that's what got me in the first place. 17-year-old Adarin Rin, only cares about two things. Her family and her family's graveyard. And right now, both are in dire straits. Since the death of their parents, Rin and her siblings have been scraping together a meagre existence as gravediggers in the remote village of Culverin, which sits at the, the foot of a harsh and deadly mountain range that was once home to the Fae. The problem with being a grave digger in Colburn, though, is that the dead don't always stay dead. The risen corpses are known as bone houses, and legend says that they're the result of a decades old curse. When Ellis, an apprentice map maker with a mysterious past, arrives in town, the bone houses attack with a new ferocity. What is it that draws them near? And more importantly, how can they be stopped for good? Together, Ellis and Rin embark on a journey that will take them into the heart of the mountains, where they will have to face both the curse and the deeply buried truths about themselves. Equal parts classic horror novel and original fairy tale, the Bourne Houses will have you spellbound from the very first page. Now doesn't that sound exciting, children? The Lie Tree by Fran Francis Hardinge. The Lie Tree by Fran Francis Hardinge. I believe this is all the middle grade young YA. And again, has that ooky spooky feeling. Uh, the leaves were cold and slightly clammy. There was no mistaking them. She had seen the likeness painstakingly sketched in her father's journal. This was his greatest secret, his treasure and his undoing, the Tree of Lies. Now it was hers, and the journey he had never finished stretched out before her. When Faith's father is found dead under mysterious circumstances, she is determined to untangle the truth from the lies. Searching through his belongings for clues, she discovers a strange tree. A tree that feeds off whispered lies and bears fruit that reveals hidden secrets. But as Faith's untruths spiral out of control, she discovers that where lies seduce, truths shatter. This is just a very eerie cover. Number three. The Dark Days Packed by Alison Goodman is The Dark Days Packed by Alison Goodman. And that is a sequel to The Dark Days Club. So I will just get up the synopsis of the Dark Days Club to give you a, re a brief idea of what the Lady Helen books are about. So, the first book in the dark and compelling Lady Hel Helen trilogy is set during the Regency period. Will appeal to teenagers and adults alike, so it's YA primarily. London during the season is a world of balls, dinners and promenades. And for a select few, the relentless battle against demons. Now, we 
it does class it as Jane Austen's High Society and Cassandra Clare's Supernatural Underworld Collide. However, because of Bridgerton, I sort of associate anything with the Regency period to that, to that very manner, that very sophisticated mannerisms and the very emphasis that is placed on a reputation. As it's set in 1812, it is in London. Uh, Lady Helen Rexall is set to make a curtsy to Queen Charlotte and step into polite Regency society. Uh, but what Helen doesn't realise is that step will take her from the glittering ballrooms of Almax and Vauxhall Gardens into the shadowy world of demonic creatures, missing housemates and deadly power. And standing between those two worlds is Lord Carlston, a man of dubious reputation and infuriating manners. But he's a man, he can get away with that. Uh, <clears throat> he believes Helen is destined to protect humanity, but he can only offer danger, savage, savagery and the possibility of madness. Not exactly the destiny suitable for a young lady in her first season. Uh, this delightfully dangerous adventure of self-discovery and difficult choices has all the unnerving dark magic of Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. I haven't read that one, but I, it's massive. Perhaps in the adaptation. And the swashbuckling action of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Again, I know who that is, but I haven't read the book. So, that... Daughter of the Merciful Deed by Leslie Penelope. Rising. And then we have Daughter of the Deep by, sorry, Daughter of the Merciful Deep by Leslie Penelope. I thought this was self-published, but it's all bit, but it has a very fluffy cover. Uh, our home began as all things do with a wish. Jane Edwards hasn't spoken since she was 11 years old when armed riders expelled her family and every other black resident from their hometown. Now, 12 years later, she's found a haven in the all-black town of Awen Awenasa. Uh, but the construction of a dam threatens to wash her home under the waters of a new lake. Jane will do anything to save, her, save the community that sheltered her. Her quest will take her to a sunken world of capricious gods and unsung myths of salvation and dreams made real. But the floodwaters are rising. In order to save her home, Jane will have to find her voice again and finally face the trauma of the past. Uh, Daughter of the Merciful Deep is a compelling historical fantasy that shines a light on the drowned black towns of the American South as Jane discovers the power of her ancestors, her family and her home. Now, I don't know a lot about the drowned towns. I believe they're mainly in Texas, all around that sort of area. But it is... Fairly short, it's only about 391 pages. Number five. Number five. Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And we have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I still have the sticker on and I still haven't read The Seven Husbands yet. But August 1983, it is the day of Nina Reaver. Uh, why does it make me laugh? Nina Reaver. Uh, annual end of summer party. Anyone, everyone who is anyone wants to be around the Reavers. Surfer and supermodel Nina, brothers Jay and Hood and their baby sister Kate. Together, the siblings are a source of fascination in Malibu and the world over, especially as the children of the legendary singer Mick Reaver. By midnight, the party will be completely out of control. By morning, the Reaver mansion will have gone up in flames. But before that, the alcohol will flow, the music will play and secrets will come bubbling to the surface. And I think, yeah, this, just flicking through, this seems to be dual timeline. And I 
I thought it was told in parts, but it's not. Uh, but yeah, my view. Number six. Is The Merciless Ones by Namina Fauna. And the Merciless Ones by Namina Fauna. This is the sequel to the Gilded Ones. So I... I mean, there's not much on the back that could spoil it, I suppose. Uh, but in the Gilded Ones, we follow our main character, who Decker, who is in a... I'm trying to remember, and without giving spoilers. But basically, the story starts when we follow Decker going through her blood purity trial. Uh, basically, if her blood runs red, she gets to stay... If it runs gold, she is outcasted from her tribe and pretty much conscripted into the army, um, which is just built on females, female power. But there is a secret. All of these girls have gold blood and it just goes from there. And from what I remember, which I can't tell you because of spoilers, it was very engaging and the twist was just i didn't see that coming so obviously this is the sequel i think it's the conclusion but i'm not 100 percent. i will have to check that but my cover of gilded one i think has green edges this one has this one has red seven is win win lose die, uh, kill die by cynthia murphy win lose kill die by cynthia murphy i think this is a ya thriller <coughs> excuse me everyone wants to be head girl until the murders begin the students at morton academy are high achievers selected based on academic excellence so when a series of murders target the school's brightest and best, the pressure is on. Someone is determined to clear the path, clear their path to the to the top, and they will stop at nothing. But who is it? And number eight, Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. Now the little tagline for this one says it's Howl's Moving Castle meets Bridgerton in this cosy Regency fantasy romance. And it's book one of three. Uh, ever since she was cursed by a fairy, Theodora Ettings has had no sense of fear or embarrassment. A condition which makes her prone to accidental scandal. Dora hopes to be a quiet, sensible wallflower during the London season. But when the stranger, handsome and utterly uncouth Lord Saucier discovers her condition, she is instead drawn into dangerous and particular, peculiar fairy affairs. If Dora's reputation can survive both her curse and her sudden connection with the least liked man in all of high society, then she may yet reclaim her normal place in the world. But the longer Dora spends with Elias Wilder, the more she begins to suspect that one may indeed fall in love, even with only half a soul. This, plus, four, plus three ebooks, is what I'm hoping to read in July. Now, if you've read any of these books, do let me know what you think. Do you think did you enjoy them do you think i will enjoy them bear in mind i enjoy most things and i think with that oh and let me know what you're reading in july it'd be fun uh, so with that and give this video a like if you like it and hit that subscribe button if you want to see this talk about these and i'll see you in the next one bye